Welcome back guys! Today I'm going to give you a great tip for 18650 cells and the usage of them. In terms of actually looking into headlamps or lamps that you have on your head and it's good for everyday use. I use it for when I'm working on my cars, I'm using it for when I'm just outside working on the wood or anything like that. And I'm also using it a lot when I'm out running in the forest in the middle of the night or whenever. The headlamps itself, I have tried many different types of them, but those two I will be showing you guys today, including the tips to make them a lot better, is the one that I use the most. So let's take a quick look at the headlamps that I have in front of me. The ones that I like the most are the ones in front of me here. But before we talk about those, we'll take a look at another one. And this is this kind of strange headlamp that we have here. If we look at them all, they have the same kind of casing including the batteries. And that is the battery case for two 18650 cells. And they are fitting a little, rather nicely on top of my head if you ask me. The difference with this one compared to the other ones is the actual lamp itself. This one contains three LEDs. And even though that looks like a lot, they, this lamp is not much stronger than the other ones. More than it takes more power. For biking this lamp is a little bit better due to how it looks in the view itself. But this one is not a topic of today, so put that aside. These two is the ones that I'm going to talk about. Even though that they look the same, they are not the same. On this one we have clear glass and you can see the LED inside directly. And that's because this one is have no lens and it's directed light with a very very small fine spot. On the other side here you can see that this one actually contains a lens itself, a lens that you actually can move. And this one will zoom out and zoom in. And as you can see the LED gets bigger or smaller. This is my favorite lamp when running in the forest when you need a wide perspective. On the other hand this lamp here is very narrow and gives a lot brighter impression. So if you are on a bike where you are biking I would actually suggest to having one of those wide one on the bike handle and this one on the head where you're looking. So let's see if we can give you some tips on how to work with this lamp. First of all something that you need to be aware of is that the wires inside here tend to come loose. And you can prevent this and my suggestion is to start to open this up and I will show you a couple of tricks. So when opening this up you will get direct access to the LED itself and the push button. So my first suggestion is that you, when you get this lamp, make sure you get this wire inside a little bit and then you add a small zip tie or a dab of glue to keep this in place. A very very common issue with this lamp is problem with the cables that they come loose from the soldered area. And the easiest way to solve that is actually to just add a zip tie around this neck or some hot glue. Take the wire and you add this one on the top itself and then you pull hard to make this sit very tightly. And when that's done you cut that end off and this one will sit a lot more tighter. The next thing that I do recommend when you're having this picked apart is that you thread lock the three bolts around here because they tend to come loose. Basically you add a little bit of thread lock and the same goes with the bolt that you have through here in the middle. That one needs to be thread locked as well. And then it's just a matter of Attaching this back again, and now it's important to get this aligned. And there you go. First phase of fixing this headlamp to even better headlamp was to lock tight and zip tie the cable in place. It can also be wise if you want the maximum power out of this, you change this wire between the LED and the battery to a thicker one. Because the current design is actually having rather high voltage drop. 
The next thing that you can do and that should be one of the priorities is to take a look at the battery compartment. This battery compartment here are made for protected cells. Protected 18650 cells generally are a little bit longer with a little bit bigger positive end. If we take two batteries here, you can see that I went ahead and soldered a little bit of a blob on the positive end compared to the original. Because if you have the original that, that I push in here and I light this up, you will see that doesn't take much to screw this one that the light actually goes back and forth so this is rather important that you add a cell with a little bit of top on and the reason for that is because this one is rather low inside here and it doesn't stick out doesn't stick up enough and that makes the edge around here press or get into the plastic edges so I found that actually soldering a little bit on top here makes it a lot better in that term. It's also important to make sure that those springs here are pushed out as far out as they can to make as firm pressure as possible. Because otherwise you will get a lamp that are flashing back and forth. And for God's sake, do not buy those lamps with cells from eBay because the cells are generally just junk. It's better to go and get grab yourself a couple of secondhand batteries from laptops packs for instance. The charger I recommend is the Opus charger and I have linked in that below as well. That charger can do 4 cell. It's a little bit more expensive but I like that charger a lot. There are of course other chargers as well but for me the Opus works fine. I have tried to set this to somewhat around what I see currently, so let's light up the headlamps. I am standing at the same distance to this wall as my camera is, and that's around 5 meters. So we take a look at the wide angle lens first, and you can see that it gets pretty decent uh, light up. And this is generally good enough for running in the forest or working with your cars. Actually, when working with your cars, I prefer to use a second mode. The second mode is not as bright, but when you get close to stuff, this is more than enough. And running in the woods when you're having snow, this also works just fine. But for running when it is wet outside, the maximum strength is needed. So if we zoom this in on the maximum, you will see that it gets brighter and also gets smaller. This works until you get a little bit closer and then you start to see the four square um, light out of the LED itself and if we go all the way in you can almost see the actual LED itself this is very very bluish and yellow and strange colors in the end so going further in than this is not really recommended but generally I use it full wide open and that's more than enough so let's take a look at the other lamp the other lamp that is very very much concentrated will look like this. And now you see how darn bright it is but it still is in the middle. The good part about this one is that it still spreads the light a little bit out on the side. And on the second setting where it is half the current you can see that it goes a lot more dimmer but still very very bright. So if we turn both on at the same time you will see the spot in the middle, how much brighter that spot in. So let's compare them when they both are zoomed in. And this is a little bit hard to do because they get this strange shape. But as you can see here on the comparison when I try to light them up on different side, you will see that they are not that far off from each other except for the color itself. And one of the reasons for the color change is that they have the lens in front. So for biking, it's actually a good complement to use both of them. Because then you get the middle one where you're looking for extra visibility and the other one to actually spread out. So which one of the lamps do you choose as your first choice? I would go with the wide angle one that you can zoom. This one is more versatile when working with stuff and working outside. 
but if you are crunching for that extra light I would go with this one though it is more spotlight on the other hand of course there is tons of other headlamps on eBay or Aliexpress or Amazon but those two are the ones among many I have tested that I think are worthy and they are also very very cheap so you don't have to pay much for them and they do work with 18650 cells and the fact that they work with 18650 cells make it even more fun to work with so guys once again I want to thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video if you don't own a headlamp yet and you are working with like me in very very dark conditions sometimes this is a good alternative to a cheap lamp they aren't the lightest lamp due to the fact that you have two batteries in the on the back of your head and you have this massive aluminium part um, they are quite heavy and they do generate some heat but they are bright and that's one of the reasons I'm using it for me this is not a problem if you want a light that is a lot more easier to carry you might be able to look for something else so thank you for watching and I see you next time bye